So, last speaker, Gary Turner from Zero. Good evening. Um, and uh, thank you to Eddie for uh, the invitation to come along and speak with you this evening. Um, rather an interesting uh, caption, which is our strap line as a business. We are um, uh, an accounting software company, and beautiful is the probably the last thing you would associate with accounting software, but that's the challenge that we set ourselves um, uh, when, when we're building and, and, and developing our product. So um, a little bit about me, just as an introduction. So I'm the Managing Director for Zero in the UK. We've been going for just over six years, coming up for seven years. Started in New Zealand, 2006, 2007. Very quickly recognized that New Zealand is quite a small, isla small island in the uh, middle of the Pacific. Um, and so uh, set about finding some other markets to, uh, uh, to, to, to get into. So we're in the UK. I've been in the UK for about four or five years. Uh, we're obviously still in New Zealand where we started, but we're also in Australia and we're now in, in the US. But we have customers in over 100 countries around the world. But we've uh, developed our product in terms of its localization for different tax and accounting rules for New Zealand, Australia, UK, and US. Um, so a little bit this more. is Arthur. Hello. Treehouse architect, small business owner, dreamer. I've always liked to build things. And to build things, he has. Like all architects, Arthur chooses his tools with care. That's why he switched to Zero. It's beautiful accounting software that runs in the cloud. That means I could share it with the people who help me run my business. This is Lucy. She keeps Arthur's books in order, and she's good at it. With Zero, she even enjoys it. Right now, I'm reconciling. Zero connects with our bank account so that each transaction comes up quickly and matches up, like it's magic. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Arthur. I'm just doing the bank rec. Cool. Zero allows unlimited users, so Arthur and his colleagues can work at the same time from different places, including his accountant. I'm Charles Green. With Zero, Charles has real-time access to Arthur's cash flow. There's nothing to install, upgrades are free, and everything is backed up automatically. I don't have to be on site with Arthur to work on his books. It's all in the cloud. That means he can work with all his clients, no matter where he is. Nice work, Charles. With Zero, these two make a great team. There's a mobile app. It's called Zero Touch. Arthur uses it to enter his receipts, check on his books, that sort of thing. It's very handy. And Zero lets Arthur keep track of his bills, which makes his vendors happy, which keeps him stocked with the finest lumber. And a business wouldn't be much of a business without money coming in, would it? That's where Zero's powerful invoicing shines. I can send invoices to my clients, and they can pay online, so I get the money right away. Zero lets Arthur and his collaborators keep the money flowing in all the right ways. When I log in and see everything running smoothly, I do my best work. Zero, it's a pleasure doing business. So uh, you, you'll be able to see from that uh, little uh, advert the, the kind of customer that we're targeting are, are small um, and medium-sized enterprises. Quite a different feel of finance in the cloud compared with the, the last couple of presentations. So we're targeting small businesses and we're targeting that ecosystem of, of advisors and professionals that support that small business economy. And there's a couple of good reasons for that. Uh, uh, can I take a quick poll? How many people are in technology or technology startups here? Can I give a show of hands? So that's about half of you. Good, okay. So we're not actually going to show you any zero. What I decided to do was just to expose a bit about what our model is in terms of how we're growing our business. So we, we do amazing accounting software, and I'd encourage you to go and have a look at it at zero.com. Um, and it's, as you can imagine, it's, it's aimed at the small and startup businesses, so it's really easy to use, really easy to get set up. There's a really cool functionality in there, but that's not what I'm going to cover off today. I'm going to cover off how we're building our company, how we're scaling it, and why we've chosen small businesses, why we're working in the cloud, and how some of those dynamics play out. Um, so I, I've just got some anecdotes and some examples. There's no real structure to this talk. I'm happy to take questions at the end. So we wanted to come up with a product that was disruptive in terms of category. Uh, traditionally, the accounting and bookkeeping space, uh, as it pertains to small and micro businesses, has been pretty restricted. The majority of small businesses in any uh, developed economy, including the UK, 
are not actually using a, a recognized system of record. They're using spreadsheets and, and moleskin notebooks and, and, and a concoction of different systems and different tools. And those that are using recognized accounting products like Sage or like some of the older incumbent products, are, are, it's a bit of a sledgehammer to crack a nut quite, a, quite often. And actually, if you look at the UK, the majority of small and micro businesses are not even using anything like that. And so we saw an opportunity to come in and, and be disruptive by changing some of those dynamics, delivering our software differently, building in new functionality that was previously not available on a desktop because we're in the cloud, some clever things and, and some, some cute things like banking integration. And so a big part of our strategy is to be really that disruptive play in an incumbent space. And actually, not just look at destabilizing uh, businesses like Sage or businesses like Intuit are the big incumbent guys have been around for the last 20, 30 years. But to penetrate um, that, that part of the market that even they haven't been able to address. And so it's really going after all small businesses. And there are many, many millions of small businesses in any developed economy. We also wanted to build um, a, a, an interesting play around our channel. How do we go to market? And the logical, obvious way to do that with a small business product, which is almost like a consumer purchasing um, experience, is just have a, have a website. And we have a website. And you can go and you can take out a trial of zero. And you can uh, bang in your credit card and, and self-serve, and away you go. Uh, but we, also, we see that uh, around that small business community, um, there are other players, there are other actors, there are other stakeholders, like accountants, like like financiers, like uh, uh, non-executive directors and investors. And we wanted to build a network that supported that. We also wanted to use things like social media and, 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 and the benefit that we have now of things like Twitter and Facebook to really allow our customers and our audience to amplify their satisfaction. And, 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 it's, and it's, uh, we, we um, get a lot of engagement with our customers directly on things like Twitter. And, and Facebook and predominantly Twitter. And if you do a bad job, everybody gets to hear about it really quickly. And so the counter argument to that is make sure you do a good job and really delight your customers about all the way from the beginning of the design and the, 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 the first few steps they take with your product right through to what happens when, when you fall over. And so we had a very conscious and deliberate strategy around making sure we delighted our customers in the product and actually using them and using their advocacy on, on platforms like Twitter to then help carry that brand awareness and carry that advocacy to other people uh, in a way that we didn't have to fund that. We didn't have to have a massive marketing budget. We didn't have to have a massive sales team, get our satisfied customers to help do that for us. And then finally, uh, this is all about building a business that's profitable and build a business that's scalable. And so from the beginning, uh, before we had any customers, we always had scale in mind. And going after a volume opportunity like small businesses globally, you can't do that if every one of your sales team has to drive around in a car. You can't do that if you have to manually kind of touch and engage with people every step of the way. So we built a, a product and a delivery platform and a way of supporting and helping our customers self-serve so that we could do that at scale and deliver at scale, but from a relatively smaller base uh, of, of investment. Uh, that's what our product looks like. Apologies, the, the, the slides have undergone a transition from Keynote on my Mac to PowerPoint on my Mac to PowerPoint on a Windows PC, and a couple of them look a bit squiffy, but that's what Zero looks like. That's the main dashboard. It pretty much hasn't changed since we launched six and a half years ago, um, and it's very approachable. Uh, people say that they like using it. They, they get a sense of satisfaction, it's clearer, they feel in control of their business. That's what, that's what it looks like, and you can have a look at that um, later. Some statistics. Um, so we now have 157,000 businesses globally running on zero. We have well over 20,000 companies in the UK as customers. So these are paying customers. These are not trialists. These are people that are running zero actively to run their accounting and book, bookkeeping. Uh, globally, we have around 6,000 accounting practices engaged as part of our channel, as part of our delivery and advisory network. 
because we found that small businesses generally are micro businesses and startups don't have financial professionals on their payroll. They're very dependent upon the advice and the, and the assistance and the professional services of accountants and practice and bookkeepers. And so we have embedded a, a, a way of engaging that community, not only that helps the accountant and the bookkeeper, but it encourages them and the client to work on the platform that we've created. So part of our success and part of, uh, in order uh, for, for us to continue to grow, will be to, to grow not just the, the engagement that we have with small businesses on our product in the cloud, but getting that channel going. And we have a couple of hundred add-on solutions. So if I uh, can convince you to do anything th this evening, is if you're a small business, and you're struggling with your finances, then go and have a look at zero. If you're a, an add-on developer, if you're a, a software developer, and you're building tools, line of business applications that you think a small business or an accounting firm might benefit from, then become one of our add-on partners. It doesn't cost anything. We have over 200 add-on solutions from CRM to time and billing, right through to pretty uh, dynamic single, single function applications as well. So we're, we're trying to build a really interesting ecosystem we want to build the, the complicated accounting engine part of it and build a platform for small businesses and their accountants and add-on solution providers to collaborate on. Um, I, I just pulled this. This is an example of the kind of advocacy we get um, uh, on a regular basis. This woman was over the weekend. Uh, and, and that's a great and powerful way for us to convey to that broader audience through our customers, through satisfying them, whether they're an accountant, an add-on developer or a small business, the power of working with a, uh, and the satisfaction they get of working with, with a product like Xero. And this is much more impactful marketing than we could ever, we could ever dream up or, or, or produce ourselves. In terms of uh, some of the other challenges that we have, uh, uh, these, these stacks are slightly, these, these are about three or four months old now, but uh, we, we, we've got a pretty big stack. So we're supporting 157,000 businesses, and there's an average of around two or three people per business. Then you're looking at an audience of hundreds of thousands of users that can be engaging with zero at any point. Uh, and that places a huge responsibility on us as the custodians of that financial service and the data to make sure that we have great uptime and great resilience and the performance of our product as we're adding more and more customers doesn't degrade. And that's placed an interesting challenge upon us is we had to raise a load of capital because this stuff is expensive, this stuff is hard to do and hard to do well at scale. So one of the key components of our model as a business and growing in the cloud has been to raise that capital early on, invest it in the hiring the right people and getting the right uh, infrastructure set up and, and, and the various frameworks that we have. But you can see we're th many thousands of, of uh, customers generating billions of, of dollars of transactions on our platform. And that, that's, that, and that gets bigger and bigger every, every year that passes as we grow. Why do we pick SMEs? Um, well, they constitute around 98% of all entities in, 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 in the UK market, and that's the same in the States, and it's the same in the other developed markets. There are more SMEs than any other kind of business. Uh, the Department of Business Information and Skills have a figure that's around 5 million in the UK. Many of them are self-employed, what you ro not recognize as incorporated businesses. And you think, well, why would they need some kind of system of record, some kind of online accounting system if they're a self-employed hairdresser or something like that. And actually, it's because whether they're a self-employed hairdresser or a hairdressing salon that employs 15 people, uh, their engagement with government bodies and, and, and organizations like HMRC around uh, personal tax and compliance is just getting more and more onerous. Uh, and actually, it's a problem for them. And so increasingly, regardless of how small you are, you're being forced to kind of cl clean up the way that you're capturing and, and, and running your business and, and, and maintaining your records. Actually, uh, SMEs contribute around 50% of our GDP as an economy. And so we're quite motivated by the prospect of what if we can improve that collectively by 1% or 2%, the prosperity of the SME not a massive change, not a massive delta in terms of improvement, but actually the impact at an economic level, macroeconomic level, is quite interesting. Uh, and bear in mind that the majority of SMEs have not been traditionally empowered by great technology services and solutions. So we see the rise of this new super SME, 
the super micro business with access to great tools and great resources and great information sources that enable them to operate and scale and run their businesses in ways that they, they'd never been capable of when it was in the back of a fag packet or a spreadsheet on a, on a PC and, and, at home or, or at the office. So we think there's some really interesting macro level opportunities um, around changing in, in the UK. And in the UK, there are around 20,000 accounting firms. And so wrapped up with all those SMEs, there are many thousands of accountants in practice shuffling paper from one part of their desk to the other and not doing particular, not feeling very good about themselves, not delivering a great amount of value to their customers, simply maintaining a basic level of compliance. And we saw a great opportunity to, to, to deliver something for them. What life is like in a practice? So we've got the customer part, the ability to run um, zero on your Mac or your Windows PC or your iPod or your iPhone um, or your Android device on a train in a hotel in cash business school, wherever you are, and there's great convenience there. It's accessible software. Zero is really inexpensive. It's 19 pounds a month typically for most customers. So it's a consumer level price. Would you be paying a, a decent ISP for all of your accounting solutions? Uh, and so we have the customers engaging with Zero on one hand. We have add-on partner solutions, and then we have accountants. And this is where the interesting part comes, because we think that accountants have a significant role to play in helping those small businesses navigate and run their businesses and run more effectively. But they need a platform on which to do that. And life for an accountant today, uh, running on desktop software and on the cloud, is around 20% of the services that you would... If, if, are any accounting, uh, practicing accountants in the room? Okay, a couple. So statistically, around 20% of what an accountant does in terms of its services um, are around advisory, and the rest of it is really boring, low-rent compliance work around getting tax returns done, the VAT filed, uh, filing at company's house, really just kind of stamping and collect collating uh, paperwork and filing it, and actually chasing customers and, and sifting through lots of unstructured data in order to just be able to do that. And that's, we think, a race at the bottom. It's commoditizing. There's really not much fun to be had, never mind any value to be had as an accountant in the next 10, 15 years. And so because of the, the, the existing way of working, a lot of that works in spreadsheet or manual. Only a small portion of it is actually systemized. And by working in the cloud and by working in a smarter way, we can change that. And I've got an example of one of the ways that we do that. Many businesses are still using accounting software from a CD-ROM, so a company's financial data can only be viewed and updated from one computer. Typically, once a year, your client sends you their files. But before you can work your magic, you need to convert their data into a format that works with your own accounting and reporting software. This old approach means you have two different ledgers that are completely out of sync. Neither ledger has the entire picture. When you multiply that across hundreds of clients, think of the hours you spend dealing with incompatible software, corrupt files, different versions, re-entering transactions, and data conversions. That wasted time isn't adding any value to your practice, and it's certainly not adding value to your client's business. Two major changes make the old way obsolete. The first major change is cloud computing. Online apps have completely changed the way people do business, such as banking, email, and of course accounting. The second major change is the single ledger. The single ledger is one of the most important breakthroughs in accounting since the personal computer. With the single ledger, both you and your clients have access to the same data using the same system at the same time, not just at the end of the year, but whenever your client needs your advice. It's a live view of the business finances. More importantly, the tools you use to prepare management and annual reports run on the same ledger that your clients use. This changes the relationship you have with your clients from an annual handover with one large fee to an ongoing collaboration that you bill monthly. That's much better for cash flow, more profitable, and your clients will love you. When you have all your clients on a single ledger, it really is a game changer. Producing individual reports for each client used to take hours. Now, by automatically linking each client's unique chart of accounts to a standardized set of reporting codes, you can apply tailored reports across large sets of clients. The shift to cloud computing in the single ledger has marked a major turning point in the business of accounting. To learn more, go to zero.com slash cloud. So we think that the, uh, sorry, I've broken the uh, remote, so bear with me. I'm sorry, that will be working now.
we say that the um, the idea of for the, for the first time hundreds of thousands or millions of micro businesses being able to engage with their accountants and their, and their financial advisors on a live platform in the cloud that's low cost that they can understand and they can use but which also enables the accountant to be more productive and doing higher value services can only be a good thing and an interesting thing and that's a, that's a significant part of our play. We've got a couple of things that, that we, we throw into the mix. So we, we, we saw the, the, the opportunity to um, deliver um, really current uh, financial information from the, from the bank statement for those small businesses. One of the chores that many small businesses have is just keeping on top of the cash flow. Doing a bank reconciliation is a massive chore traditionally. Uh, and it ends up that they fly blind. They don't know where they are. Um, they don't know whether they have enough capital to continue running or invest in their business. And so the ability of, of taking that traditionally a laborious, onerous, and unpleasant task of reconciling your bank statement with your accounts is something that people are now encouraged to do in products like Zero every day. We make it a five-minute job. We make it enjoyable. We actually make it fun for them to do that. And part of the, the reason that, 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 that customers like doing that is that we now pump in those bank statements largely on an automated basis now. So if you're in the UK, we have feeds for about 80 different banks and credit cards. You set them up in zero, and every day it's drawing down your financial information and enabling you to, to recon reconcile that in some, in some really smart ways and different tools that we've got to, to do that. So we think the whole banking thing is a really interesting game changer here as well. So what we've built is that what started off as a small business accounting bookkeeping product that was in the cloud that you paid for as you used it, we don't charge for the number of users. It's typically 19 pounds a month, and you can have 100 users, or you can have one user. We don't care. In fact, we'd love you to have more users on it because that's how you get the assistance from, from your ecosystem to support your small business. And that's really grown from what was traditionally the zero when we started was everything on that, that, uh, that blue side of the, the chart. And increasingly, what we've done is we've built around that single ledger idea additional tools for practices that enable them to just deliver those services and advise those services in a more meaningful way. So we actually have, with, with our business, we have, if we had a, um, uh, an MBA from Harvard, um, we'd be describing as a two-sided model here, a two-sided market. Uh, and that we have a product that is zero.com, which is the bookkeeping product that's, that, 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 that if you haven't looked at them, please go and do. But quite an interesting play also in the cloud around empowering that, all, that, that community around those small businesses. Ultimately, we're seeking to monetize the adoption of the blue half of this chart. Um, and actually, if that means that we have to build the parks in green, then we're happy to do that as well. And so far, early days, but that strategy is beginning to, to play out for us. And so if the traditional practice dynamic, whether it's in the UK or New Zealand or Australia or the US, has been We'd love to do more advisory if only we didn't have all this compliance friction to deal with. Uh, what we're seeing is a new generation of accounting firm and a new generation of small business working in a much more interesting way, squeezing out their reliance on unstructured and manual data, using the benefit and the power of the cloud to do things in a collaborative way today, not when I've got time three weeks from now, not in a quarterly engagement I have with my accountant that's about my tax return or about filing my VAT, actually helping me run my business more productively by giving me great insight into the performance of my business, helping me identify that I've got capital to expand and grow and working out where my next strategic move should be. And all of that stems from building that core bookkeeping and accounting app and the services around that in the cloud. And that was my last slide. Thank you very much. Can we take some questions for, for Gary? Oh. Hi, a uh, couple of quick questions. First, I assume you have a global vision for this product. And if that's the case, how are you planning to deal, for instance, with relatively different accounting system? For instance, take France. It's relatively different compared to the UK. Uh, second, there are a number of ERP systems that are built around the double entry uh, uh, management system. And then once, if you introduce your business transactions correctly, then accounting derives immediately out of that. The question is, what's your positioning uh, with respect to those kind of solutions? So I'll take the last part first. 
And so, um, so zero is a full double entry or a cruel based accounting system. So we are under the covers of what looks like a really simple and approachable app is a full hardcore accounting app in there that from an accounting perspective will go toe to toe with any established ERP financial system. There are some limitations that mean that we won't be selling zero to BP anytime soon. Uh, our target audience is that small business audience, but in terms of accounting, rock solid. And we were one of the first, if not the first, accounting products in the cloud to be certified <coughs> by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales. So pretty much bomb-proof accounting-wise. In terms of uh, localization in other, in, other, um, in other countries, so we have localized in four countries at the moment. We have a vanilla version for everywhere else called the rest of the world edition. Um, actually, the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the easy part of localization is language because that's a... Uh, uh, you can define that. It's, it's, it's pretty defined. Uh, the, the, big, the big challenge for us is actually the way that reporting and the way that custom and practice operates in different countries just in Europe varies enormously. Um, and so it's absolutely something that we have as part of our roadmap for the future. But we want to we earn our wings uh, with the English-speaking version of a zero in the markets that we've chosen. So that's US, UK, Australia, New Zealand in descending order. Uh, but absolutely would love to, to open that up, but we don't underestimate the challenge of different gap and different um, uh, 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 challenges we'd have in different countries. So one, one day bit, but not soon. Hi, Gary. Yeah, I was one of the two practicing, well, no longer practicing accountants, but you're right. I think I wasn't very happy with myself, so very <laughs> insightful. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to take you back to that. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 the dark days. Um, <laughs> but um, so actually, just a couple of first off, um, do you have a, in your head a sort of a ceiling um, when it comes to size of business? Um, after which it's just, you know... Yeah, so uh, we have some pretty big companies on zero, but they're the exception to the rule. Um, so when we think of a typical zero demographic, we think of a startup with one employee uh, up to our own 20. Okay. And that, that's the... Uh, the so so the, 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 uh, the kind of different axis of complexity in, are not just numbers of employees, but revenue and the line of business that you're in and... Uh, and, and so there'll be some functional reasons why zero wouldn't be appropriate for you and you're a small business, or you could be a really simple large business. But the, 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 the majority of our customers are in that one to 20, turn, uh, one to 20 staff and in one to two to three million turnover, that kind of bracket. And that's just because, the, the, as I say, 98% of all businesses are like that. Sure. And then secondly, um, so you, you talked about the 200 add-on partners, and I know you guys take a very sort of vertical approach. Um, to, to integrations in contrast to, say, free agent, which takes more of a horizontal approach. I just wondered where that comes from, and, I mean, is it likely to change? So I don't know if I'd recognize the fact that, that we're any different from free agent um, in, in that respect. I don't, we, we have all flavors and different, different kinds of, of add-on partner solution. Uh, we have a completely open API. You don't have to pay us any money. You don't have Sorry, to join a just club. To start, I meant more. They only have about 20 add-on partners, I think, whereas you've got 200. Where yep. I, so I think you're much more sort of integration focused than they are, whereas they look to have it more within their product. I think that's a measure of scale. Um, and, and with all due respect to the guys at Free Agent, we know them and we got on. We, we play light, nicely together. <laughs> Free Agent have around 30,000 customers. In predominantly one country, we have nearly 160,000 customers in four, four territories and lots of others. And so there's just a, a scale thing there that, that that's why we have so many. But we, I, I think we, we, we have a pretty open uh, agenda when it comes to add-on partners. Okay, one more. Okay. Okay. Uh, my, my question is about uh, the big dominant players, Sage and Intuit, around the world. So... I think exactly because of the likes of Zero, they've really begun to wake up to the cloud. So Sage in particular in the last year or so has really turned itself around. Um, how, how do you think you guys are going to deal with that threat when it comes? Because they are dominant in terms of channel and brand around so, the world. So we absolutely, uh, and we're not, we're, we're hopefully um, not perceived by anybody as thinking that we've got it made and that we've kind of won the war. Uh, we've done well so far, but there are some big incumbent uh, legacy businesses like Sage and like Intuit in the US. Um, we, our, our view, and we haven't seen anything yet to, to change this view, 
is that this is a fundamental shift. This isn't just a, a play where if you're an incumbent desktop provider, you can quickly knock together a cloud-based product and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're at the races. Uh, I'd liken it to a shift from, this is like DEC um, misjudging the advent of the PC. You know, this is, this is like, so DEC had a line of PCs, all the major mainframe uh, vendors, the big iron guys all brought out PCs in the 80s, almost as a gesture. So I, said, well, I guess we might as well have some of that PC market as well. But fundamentally misjudged, what the, with the exception perhaps of HP and obviously IBM, but a lot of the, the, the other mainframe guys really misjudged what it took to, to kind of cut it in this new world. And so we wouldn't rule them out, uh, but we haven't seen anything yet that, that says that they've got it. Um, that they're making more than just the marketing noise to try and, 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 and uh, deliver real value here. Most of their products are still quite immature. Sage specifically is still quite a young product, um, talking a good game and really delivering a, a lot of innovation. Um, and we see innovation and in constantly changing. And we, we've, in about six years now, we've, we've issued around 70, 80 updates to zero. We do it every four or five weeks. And that is constantly challenging and constantly moving on. And so um, uh, we, we're very respectful of the, the old guard, but we don't see, we don't, we don't see them as a, a material threat. Gary, I'm going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Thank you. Moving on, but thank you very much, Gary.